Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be answering the question, what is a tree diagram? And again, we're going to go back to that example when we're trying to uh, toss a coin three times and get exactly two heads. Uh, the question we want to answer here though for constructing this tree diagram where um, is what are the possible outcomes for each toss? So for the first toss, we could get heads or we could get tails. For the second toss, we could get heads or we could get tails. And for the third toss, well, let's use a different color than brown. Uh, how about green again? For the third toss, heads or tails. Now we know from the odometer method when we listed out all of the possible outcomes that there's eight possible outcomes. So just looking here, it looks like there's only gonna be six, but we have to think of all the different combinations we can get for each of these three stages. A okay, tree diagram is simply an organizational tool uh, used to find possible outcomes or determine probabilities. And matter of fact, let's change the first stage up here to be a different color than orange. How about we do purple? Mm, pink is a little bit easier to see on the screen. That way uh, we know that each value is happening in a different stage. So you can draw a tree diagram and it's called a tree diagram because when you draw it out it looks like branches from a tree. You can draw it going up and down so vertically or you can draw it horizontally both are completely accurate. Um, for this example, why don't we draw it horizontally? So going from left to right. So when we're creating this tree diagram, we wanted to ask ourselves what's happening in the first toss and when we could get heads or we could get tails. Now that that first toss of that coin is complete, we want to ask ourselves, what can we get on the second coin toss? And on the second coin toss, regardless of what we get, on the first one, we can get heads or tails. Notice already if we go down these branches, one, two, three, four, we have four possible outcomes so far. Now on that third coin toss, really doesn't matter what we got on the first coin toss. There's no connection of what happened in the second coin toss. The coin doesn't remember what it was before. So on the third coin toss, we can get heads or tails for any of these last possible outcomes. And if we march down the tree diagram here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different branches going on here. The first branch, we get heads, heads, heads. I'm gonna highlight that heads, heads, heads. We could get heads, heads, tails, heads, heads, tails. We could get heads, tails, heads heads, tails, heads, and I'm just going to fill out the rest here, but notice you're just marching down the different branches or across the different branches here and writing down all of the different combinations that you can get. Keeping it highlighted, the tree diagram, makes it a little bit stuffy and difficult to see, so I'm going to undo all of these highlightings, but there's no guesswork or having to memorize what comes next. So how do we feel about the tree diagram? I hope that looking at this, things feel a little bit more clearly. We still get our eight possible outcomes for this example, um, but it can get a little crowded. Um, and if you have more elements, it's gonna be a lot more drawings. 